Welcome back to Big Board. I had a few folks uh, ask me to do some follow-up on Montelema and what transpired yesterday. Uh, I came play with four players. And this short version is right in front of you. Uh, an entire battalion of Falsamiega lost. Uh, stuff killed here. Basically one company out of each regiment of the three regiments that are on the board. This is a recon uh, battalion. Uh, not a great performance, right? And we've only managed to knock out two units. Now, while we have killed those two units, it's, it's interesting that with the way the game system works, there's an opportunity to route units. And route unit, routing units uh, come back and they'll come back at uh, the headquarters location of the enemy. So these, these scout cars keep coming back. I've killed, shush, well, I haven't killed them. I've routed them several times. And it, it, it is uh, highly frustrating to uh, go through that exercise where literally the very next activation of, the, of that particular formation that the scout car belongs to, boom, up it pops. Back they come, and given their movement rates, they're zipping all over the board, and uh, they were routed two hours ago, went re regrouped back at HQ, and uh, here they are back on the map again. So, pretty frustrating, but <clears throat> it all seems to work in the context of the system. I'm not saying it's bad per se, just frustrating as the German player. Uh, it seems to be very difficult for us to get kills uh, and not so uh, for them. However, we are not playing our best game at the moment either. So that uh, is a bit of a challenge. Um, let's see. So I, let's just, I'll try and recap what went on as best I can. Uh, I think yesterday we we started at something like the either the 1100 or the 1500 turn on... Uh, the day prior, so that would have been the 22nd, I think. I can't see the turn chart, hang on. Yeah, the 22nd, and so we played a couple of afternoon turns, played the night, and then we got all the way through the next day, <coughs> yesterday, starting at nine and finishing at three, <coughs> or really starting at 9.30, 10 o'clock, because we, we had a number of, uh, you know, we had to, Get everyone up to speed on what had transpired and what we were doing and uh, what they needed to do and rules and bits and pieces like that so there's also there was a lot of explaining along the way and it's all good everyone had read the rules but there's one thing to read the rules another thing to actually push a chip around the, around the map so long and short of it is uh, additional battalion of falsham jaeger came in uh from Lamar, headed north and they had, uh, I encouraged the commander to push forward, and he did, uh, much to my chagrin, because uh, a, a tank and a, a, a scout car formation pulled up and just literally killed an entire battalion in two turns. Uh, yeah, it was just bad luck and maybe, you know, lack of uh, cognizance of how to deploy because they didn't know whether stagging was good or bad, and depending on the artillery, which is the mother of all killers in this game. If you have artillery superiority and you use it effectively, you cannot lose a battle, I don't believe, the way, and particularly if you get just even the smallest break with chits, uh, you're, going to, you're going to dominate the, the board because you can not only frustrate your enemy and weaken your enemy such that you can then pull up in front of it and shoot it, blow it to pieces and then drive happily drive off down the road you or even if you don't kill it you will put it in such a state that when it's activated rather than moving and uh conducting its exercises or its mission that you're going to spend time recovering uh disorganizations because you get more than four you die right so uh artillery and this guy has a lot of artillery uh the americans have a lot of artillery you're 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 under pressure from from the get-go we have uh, three artillery batteries and we're not using them very effectively. Now, the good news is, though, for the Germans, in the middle, we did manage to uh, clear out all the French, push the Americans to the hills here. They had their artillery batteries in the hills and they had scout cars zipping around spotting uh, 
They okay, came down and blocked this bridge here and it took a while for me to get rid of them. I had had my artillery chased off by scout car formation. I finally got some additional tanks on the map. Uh, the first turn, the tanks arrived, we got one unit. And then this next turn, I think we got four or three or something like that. And that's made a bit of a difference, but I've had to spread them out and uh, I'm not able to do much uh, value with them. Primarily because oh, 36th Infantry has arrived uh, and most of the divisional assets have arrived and one battalion. And uh, I have one company and a, a Panther company over there uh, holding the line, as they say. And we're, we're in a world of uh, doo doo there. So, um, you know, this, this, uh, this force and the rest of it that's coming is going to pose significant problems. Uh, we have nothing between them and Montelemar to stop them. Okay, so you say, what are you gonna do, Kevin? Well, we had moved this formation all the way up to the bridge, all the way up there, the exit all the way up there, and we we're getting ready to take them and the recon battalion out, and we saw the straits that the Falsham Jaeger were getting into, and I thought, well, if we bring this formation down here, maybe we can hold this road open long enough for the next set of units to come on the board down here somewhere, <clears throat> try and make an exit up the highway on the evacuation route, and these uh, meager forces here will play some sort of delaying game. I'm not sure that's going to happen, man. I just don't think it's going to happen. I do get another formation way up there on the left-hand side of that river. Probably where that die is, actually. It's probably a good, uh, where that black block, if you can see it. Let's move up there and have a look. Um, the, the, we get another formation up here. And it's pretty hefty. I think it's uh, uh, two or three battalions of units. I think I'm, I think I'm mixing my, uh, my battalion and regiment uh, scaling so my apologies it's regiments and brigades and uh battalions building up to regiments or brigades so we're, we're dealing with battalions of forces here and it's one regiment uh that the the yellow green and red uh units are making up so at least that's what i think i have i don't know anyway uh so I, and i'm holding i'm holding this bridge up here I've got, there's another bridge all the way down there, right where the window pane reflection is. So uh, there's a, I've got a, a scout car formation holding in the city there. Uh, I, I think what I've done wrong here is I've been too dispersed. I, I was not happy with the lockstep kind of march side by side, company aside, a company uh, across the map and fire artillery put a barrage marker on a hex so that they can't shoot out anywhere but adjacent and then march up, kill the unit and then move on and rinse and repeat. I was looking for a different experience and boy did I get it. So uh, I think what we're gonna have to do is as new forces come on, be a, uh, try and consolidate them a little more. There's still a number of days to go in this scenario, assuming we, we stay in the game because in scenario, well, here we go, just got the right page too. Scenario seven, there are VPs allocated for each side uh, for capturing these uh, yellow locations and the red locations. So red locations, yellow locations, and the green locations. He'll get uh, two VPs for holding these, I'll get half a VP. We both get one VP for this, and we both get, uh, and I get two for that, and he gets one for that. So uh, there's other VPs for losses for the Germans uh, that, that um, accrued to the Allies. But as you can see, let's just get up to where we are. I think we're in the middle of, yeah, 1900. This is the next set of uh, our units that come on, his units that come on, and then uh, this on the 24th, the next day, the 189th come on, and, uh, but we're rolling to see when and where, or when they come on. Um, and that's gonna come, that's gonna bring them up, uh, up on the north here. And that will change things a little bit. That might allow me to disengage here, 
pull these Falsham Jaeger out. I don't know if the Falsham Jaeger, because they're attacked, they count for victory points for the ally uh, for the Germans uh, as much. I don't know if they do or not. So that'll be an interesting thing to check on. And then uh, August 24th, uh, in, in, on the second turn, another battalion of forces will come on board. Both of these, in fact, need to skedaddle up the north. So we're gonna, those Falschmjäger are gonna have to be the guys, what's left of this battalion, uh, this regiment, I guess. Yeah, because three companies are forming a battalion and there's uh, another three companies at least here. So uh, the balance of this regiment uh, here are going to have to hold off the 36th over there. So pretty difficult. Now, the only uh, the only reason that we won't be playing next week or the week after is that our friend who is playing the Allies has is having a baby. Well, he's not having a baby, but his wife is. And that may, pay, may put a crimp in the gameplay. And one of the things that we did notice that we felt like the first day and a half of gameplay was pretty much a waste of time. There wasn't a lot of activity. Uh, it did give you some choices to make in terms of where you were going to defend. But really, this is where you have to defend as the, as the, as the allies. You can defend back further, I suppose. But you, you, you could literally say, hey, here's Task Force Butler, start at turn X on the 22nd, right near the end, once more of the Germans are on board, the Falschmjäger are on board, and you can set up anywhere from here all the way up to here, because you're not going to set up over on the left hand, or the far side of the map, you're not going to set up in the woods, you may try and set up in the middle here or put some screening forces here, but this is the exit road. This is the road that is the shortest distance to an A and B for a crewman victory point. So it makes no sense for you as the allies to not attempt to try and block, in particular, you know, this section of terrain right here. So uh, why, why, why spend, we spent a full day uh, moving 20 pieces around each uh, to get to this point. I think we could have uh, started the game with the Germans set up on the other side of the river and uh, and gone for it for there. from there. That would be an ideal starting point. And we're going to look for a scenario in, in the game, in the scenario book that perhaps has that uh, particular starting point. And then we'll look at that as a, a campaign game and play on from there. And see what happens. See if that makes uh, for a more interesting opening set of maneuvers. Um, so, so now, yeah, of course, we wouldn't have had the opportunity to lose all these Germans and, and be scattered all over the place if we hadn't had the full scenario experience. And I don't know that I would have missed that. <laughs> anyway, I thought I'd give you a quick update and share with you what was going on. This is where we're currently sitting. I may have to have this sit here for a week or two, as is. And uh, we'll, we'll re-engage when it's appropriate, get everybody back together. And if we can't get all four players back, we'll at least get two back together and uh, we'll see how things uh, transpire from there. So I thought you might like that. We'll talk to you soon and thanks for, uh, for watching and tuning in. All the best.